Do you remember when you first identified as an artist? Well, that's got to be about 100 years ago now. Um, <laughs> I don't know that I, even as I was making quilts when I first started, I would hesitate to say I was an artist. It took a while until I saw or entered more contests and then had a winner win here or this or that before I felt like I was an artist, a quilt artist. And then it was fun to say that I'm a quilt artist, not just a quilter. When did you realize this is something I like doing? Uh, oh, back when I was taking piano lessons as a child, and my mom saw all the drawings in the margins of the piano <laughs> practice book, and she says, I think you need art lessons rather than piano lessons. So I've wanted to be an artist all my life and dabbled in lots of things. Although I took a degree to teach and be a high school librarian. Oh. But uh, I was coming down here into a part-time all all my, all my life. And how old were you at that time? When I started coming down here? 40. I distinctly remember art doing uh, art class in the fifth grade. And um, before that, I don't have very many memories of anything, but uh, I do still have a couple of those things that I did in the fifth grade that my mother held on to. I grew up with it since I was very little. I had a big interest in it since I was very little. I had a, a little toy guitar before I was big enough to have a real guitar that was probably this around this size. Still have know. that toy guitar? We do. I think we do, yeah. I think it is stuffed in the closet somewhere. How did you go from that little girl who uh, acted out soap operas, by the way soap operas are still on, I wonder if you still do that, <laughs> to where you are today? Wow, so I continued to evolve. I read a lot, and I had an English teacher in high school, so teachers really matter. An English teacher, he used to take us to the theater to see like Shakespeare and other kind of plays, and he would introduce us to different cultures. So we would go to different restaurants from, you know, Japanese, German, just to introduce us to different cultures. And it really developed my love of writing. So just me reading Shakespeare and getting into more books, um, Toni Morrison and Langston Hughes. And I, as I got older, I went to Columbia College and I majored in theater and fashion design. And from there, all my friends be, are artists. And it just allowed me to see that you can actually make a living being an artist. I'm an alchemist, I'm a healer, I'm the lyrical healer, it's all in me. And if you scream equality for all humanity, then you shouldn't sleep, because I won't sleep until we all are free. Well, I grew up in a small town, and there wasn't any representation. I didn't know that I was LGBTQ, whatever, and it was interesting as this thing called the internet came out, right? And uh, shows like Will and Grace and Ellen, that was a really big groundbreaking moment when she came out on TV in her career. She nearly lost it completely uh, for years, right? And now she's celebrated. So for me, going through grad school, I looked at how media and performance could be used uh, to help people find connection as well as to find uh, person-to-person -person relations through the arts in order to overcome the isms, racism, homophobia, so on and so forth. I was always interested in visual arts. And when I got into college, I didn't really plan to do a lot of coursework in uh, like literature, mm -hmm. but, but you had to take some. And I realized, well, I like poetry, I like stories, I, I like novels. So it was really the other way around. And then so I taught uh, nine years language arts, and I liked the poetry, and I liked the literature, and I tried to encourage the kids. But, but in the background was always art. And mm -hmm. so my kids, a lot of the assignments I gave to the kids in, in school, there, there might be a, a graphic involved. And, and, and so I don't think it was jumping from literature to art. It was like they kind of came together. I'm curious, what do you think makes you an artist? I don't know. Maybe I just steal my ideas in such a way you can't tell. <laughs> I just think, oh, that that looks like, I'm seeing some three birds over here that I have on a table and I'm thinking, I think 
those would make a really good quilt pattern. <laughs> when I think about you, you're all about good. You, you want to sew good, you want to see good, you want to do good. Why is that so important to you? When it comes to seeing good, I think that we need to work harder to see more good in each other. And I know that there was a time where maybe the way that I lived my life, people may not have seen good in me. However, as I continue to live, and you say that to me, that it seems like I'm all about good, but I can think back to a time when perhaps you wouldn't have said that about me, right? So I'm thinking it would be beautiful if we see the good in each other no matter what, like no matter where you are. So tell me about Kenneth Freed. You had an apprenticeship with him. I learned a lot. He, he holds people's feet to the fire and he, he, um, he doesn't have a, like a set curriculum. This week we're gonna do X, Y, Z. He watches what you're doing and he'll think, you need a little more help with this, so I'm gonna give you your next assignment. Uh, ABC instead of XYZ. So it was very personal, hands-on instruction. I, I can't relate to that. I'm sorry to say I've never had a mentor really and I always felt a little bit uh, cheated perhaps because I never had that teacher that I was invited over to their house or uh, someone who really took an interest in my work. I always was on my own, just exploring on my own and and following through with my own ideas. And I think that's why as a 21 year old, I was able to do that project because there was no advisor. There's no person like adult figure that helped me in any way. I went on my own to paint stores to find the very best paint. I went on my own to find all the materials that would I need and just went to the wall and did it. And so I, I I would hope that there are mentors out there because I think it's a wonderful connection and relationship for young people or even not so young beginning artists to have someone who encourages them. Uh, but I don't think I ever really had that. There's nothing wrong with forging your own path. Just forging your own path, yes. yep. Support for Kalamazoo Lively Arts is provided by the Irving S. Gilmore Foundation, helping to build and enrich the cultural life of greater Kalamazoo.